As part of our commitment 2016 election coverage, WGL is covering all the races that impact the Susquehanna Valley, from the presidential contest down to state and local races. It's our commitment to making you a more informed voter. I'm joined now by the candidates running for the 95th Legislative District in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. This district covers the city of York and nearby suburbs. These candidates are running for Representative Kevin Schreiber's seat. Schreiber is not seeking re-election. The candidates from left to right are Carol Hill Evans, the Democratic candidate and York City Council President, and Joel Sears, the Republican candidate and a businessman from Spring Garden Township. Thank you both for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, we'll start Thank with Miss Carol Hill Evans. Yeah. Let's just start with this. What motivates you to want to represent this district? What motivates me is the fact that I've been representing the city of York for eight years as council president, uh, as a council person, and so this just encompasses more of the residents, mm -hmm. um, new faces, um, similar problems, and um, I bring experience enough that I can take it to Harrisburg with me, and that's what motivates me. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sears, same question. And my motivation, Mike, is really to represent the entire district. I feel in the 20 years that I've lived in the 95th that uh, the representation has primarily been focused on an area within maybe three or four blocks of City Hall. And those of us that, that live in the suburbs and in the neighborhoods really don't feel much of the, the benefit or the impact of that. And I feel like I'm ready at this point to take a much broader perspective to Harrisburg and represent the entire district. Ms. Hill Evans, what challenges facing the City of York and, this, and the surrounding district would you take? What, what fights of those challenges would you bring with you to Harrisburg? Equitable funding of our education, mm -hmm. making sure that regardless of what your, your zip code is, that you get the same opportunities as everyone else would mm -hmm. get. Jobs creation. We're an area where we need jobs, and so um, I would support uh, legislation that would increase jobs creation. Um, in addition to that, um, re uh, re um, bringing back the resources uh, for our residents who mm -hmm. are struggling with mental health issues, particularly mm -hmm. our veterans. Mm -hmm. So those are the issues that I see facing our entire district, mm -hmm. and those are the issues that I want to be fighting for in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. Anything particular for you, Mr. Yeah, Sanders? I think a lot of that builds on what Carol was talking about. Mm -hmm. Economic development is crucial. That's the foundational issue. Right alongside of that is education uh, and equity mm -hmm. in the funding. And that means for all forms of, of public education and derivatives, that we offer throughout the Commonwealth, the traditional publics, the charters, and even some consideration for some of the private schools and the supports that are necessary uh, that government can actually help streamline. Beyond that is pension reform, which is crucial at both the state and the municipal level, serious problems in the structural areas as well as the payment uh, pressures. And then on the domestic side, let's say not so much the economic, would be things like getting a real handle on gun violence, especially in the inner cities, mm -hmm. and then finally the opioid crisis, which is really beginning to, to come into focus throughout the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And something that's been talked a lot about uh, by the coroner in York County in particular. Well, you led me into my next question. Those are some things that may feel some more local to just the district. Of the things that are happening statewide, whether it be the pension crisis and the opioids, what are something that you're specifically passionate about in, in terms of the state is facing right now? I would say especially it would be the um, the pension crisis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there needs to be some reform. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a task force that was formed between mm -hmm. our state auditor general and the governor uh, in order to address some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. And there was a report that was just put out that is going to, that makes recommendations on what some of the things that need to be done in order to uh, alleviate this problem for our third, especially our third class cities within the Commonwealth mm -hmm. and other municipalities. Anything else that you think, that particularly statewide issues that need to be addressed? Yeah, I really think that one of the problems that, that I've been focusing on for years now, 10 to 12 years as a matter of fact, as part of a statewide coalition, is a restructuring of the way we tax to finance education. And I believe strongly, and I have the numbers to back it up as well as what comes from the Independent Fiscal Office, that we can completely eliminate school property tax over about a two-year period of time, take that burden away from the property owners, and mm -hmm. spread that as broadly as possible across the public, because after all, it is public education and that's a public trust. Mm -hmm. Right behind that is the issue of state tax. The corporate net income tax of 9.9% .9 is the second highest in the nation. And it's a job killer, it's a creation killer, and mm -hmm. it's an investment killer. You take those two together, eliminate the property tax, do something about that corporate net income tax, and you make Pennsylvania a powerhouse for economic development. You both be new faces to Harrisburg. There's a lot of folks who look at what's going on up there and think, who would want to go join in that mess? They never can get anything done up there. So what, what is the biggest problem facing the General Assembly, do you think? And, and why do you want to go up there and join in? 
because I've been the voice of the people um, for as many years as I've been on council, I want to take that experience. Um, I want to be the one to stand up. And I've done it for 43,000. I would like to do it for 66,000. Um, is, it's, what motivates me is just that my passion mm -hmm. um, as a legislator for the people and the residents that I serve. It's very important for them to know that somebody is listening as I have listened to them for all these years and then take those ideas and turn them into resolutions mm -hmm. to their concerns and their issues. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sears? Well, throughout my business and civic life, I've been a consensus builder, and I think that's the piece that seems to be missing, especially in the, uh, the lower house. The Senate seems mm -hmm. to be able to do a little bit better job of, of crafting statesmanship among the, the members and moving legislation forward. It mm -hmm. seems to me that the sticking point's in, the, in the, the lower house, the house. And that's essentially where I want to be and, and to take advantage of the skills that I've developed over the years in building consensus and helping people understand that if we have common goals, to begin with, then it makes it much, much easier to, to push the ball across the line, so to speak. Lastly and briefly, we've kind of touched on this, but sum it up for us. Why are you the best person to represent the district? As state representative, um, I would support and create enforceable legislation that increases our jobs creations, that ensures that we have equitable funding in our education, mm -hmm. um, and also that restores the resources for our residents that are struggling with mental health issues and in particular our veterans. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sears, why are you the best person? Well, I think I'm well qualified in terms of background, professional and, and uh, experiential, but I'm also somebody who's able to connect with people. And as a representative, the number one goal from my perspective is to make as many connections with people as possible. These districts are comprised of roughly 66,000 people. Mm -hmm. So that's a tall order. It takes the ability to connect to listen and then to synthesize all the information that you get to try to find the common ground for policy formation and then maybe spill that over a little bit so that you take into account the fact that you're really a state representative and you need to be something more than just a district representative with paroch parochial points of view. I can do that. Okay. Thank you both very much for joining Thank us. You. Well, Thank you. Best of luck in November. Thank, Thank you. you. Remember election day is Tuesday, November 8th and keep up with the latest election news on WGL.com. There you can find more information on the other races we're following that you'll only find online.